everybody, this is Caitlin with the Twinsburg Library here for another awesome virtual vacation, this time to Russia. So we are going to read a quick book about Russia, we're going to make a really cool Russian craft, and then we're going to make some delicious Russian apple cake. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to read Living in Russia by Jesse Burton. Zrazvutia. That's how we say hello in Russia. My name is Katya. I live in Russia, a country in both Europe and Asia, where more than 140 million people live, including me. Russia is the largest country in the world. It takes up almost one-eighth of all the land on the planet. It has coasts on three oceans, the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, and the Arctic Ocean. There are 11 time zones in Russia. That means when it is midnight in the western part of Russia, it is 10 a.m. on Russia's east coast. The Russian plain extends from Russia's western border to the Ural Mountains. To its south is the Caucasus Mountain Range. At 18,510 feet, Mount Elbrus is the highest peak in the Caucasus Range and in all of Europe. Siberia is the largest region in Russia. It spans from the Ural Mountains to the Pacific Ocean. Siberia makes up more than three quarters of all the land in Russia, yet only 27% of Russia's population lives there. Still, there are plenty of other things living in Siberia. There are three ecosystems in Siberia. The tundra in the northern region. Small shrubs and moss grow in the tundra. It's very cold and windy, which is perfect for arctic foxes and snowy owls. The taiga region is known for its lush forests. Brown bears and gray wolves thrive in this region. To the south is the steppe region. Many different animals live on the grassy plains. Moscow is the capital and biggest city in Russia. The Kremlin is in the center of the city. It used to be a fortress government used to be a fortress. Government offices, museums, and churches can be found there. The city of St. Petersburg is located on the Baltic Sea. There are beautiful buildings and museums. Nizhny Novgorod is a city at the intersection of two large rivers. It is a popular hub for business. Novosibirsk is a city in Siberia. Many people, like my family, visit its famous zoo. Last summer, my family traveled more than two hundred thousand or more than two thousand miles on the Trans-Siberian Railway from our home in Moscow to Novosibirsk. It took two days. In Novosibirsk, we spent a lot of time at the zoo. There are more than 11,000 animals there. My mom is a zoologist. She gave a talk at the zoo about Siberian tigers. Back home, I live in an apartment with my mom, dad, and older brother, Alexander. Our apartment is near the university where my mother teaches. My father works for an oil company. He coordinates how oil is transported and delivered. My brother loves soccer. He practices any chance he can, even before school. In the morning, Alexander wakes me up when he, get, when he gets in from practice. I put on my school uniform and get ready for school. Then I help make breakfast. Today we eat hot cereal called kasha and drink tea. After breakfast, Alexander and I walk to school together. I meet my best friend, Maria, along the way. School starts at 9 o'clock. There are 30 students in my class. We study reading, writing, math, history, science, gym, singing, and drawing. This morning we are learning about Peter the Great, a famous Russian ruler who reunited all of Russia. Would you like to hear about him? In 1672, Peter was born in Moscow. His family was very wealthy, and his father was the Tsar. When Peter was four, his father died. Peter's brother Ivan became the Tsar. Peter was given the title of second Tsar, but he did not govern. Instead, he studied subjects that interested him, like military operations, navigations, carpentry, and printing. He met many different people outside of Russia during this time. In 1696, Ivan died, and Peter became the sole Tsar. Peter spent the next year touring the great cities of Europe. When he returned to Russia, Peter began to make changes. He applied what he learned abroad. 
He organized Russia's military, established the first Russian newspaper, looked for better access to trade with Europe. It took more than 20 years, but Russia finally succeeded. They claimed land on the Baltic Sea and built a port city of St. Petersburg. Peter did not stop there. He stressed the need for math and science in schools, and he sent troops to the farthest part of Russia, all the way to the Pacific Ocean. In 1721, he formed the Russian Empire. After history, we study math, reading, and writing. Then it is time for lunch. We eat dumplings stuffed with meat and onions called pilmeni, and some fruit it is very yummy. When lunch is done, we have science and then art. Art is my favorite class. We are learning about abstract art and how artists use colors and shapes to show feelings. Today, I am feeling orange and squiggly. When school lets out at 3 o'clock, I go to ballet class with Maria. We both love to dance. First, we warm up at the bar. We also practice different positions with our feet. This help us, helps us become strong and graceful dancers. When I get home, it is time for dinner. We have soup and roasted chicken with noodles. We drink tea sweetened with jam. After dinner, my mother and I get dressed up for a special night out. We are going to the Bolshoi Ballet. It is one of the oldest ballet companies in the world. Tonight, they are performing the Firebird. It is based on the Russian fairy tale. The dancers leap across the stage. Their arms flutter just like a bird, bird wings. Maybe I will dance on the stage someday. I get ready for bed when we return home. I look at the program from tonight's ballet. It shows many interesting places where the ballet dancers perform. They travel all over the world. My parents tuck me in. I tell them that I would like to travel all over the world and dance when I grow up. Would you like to travel to Russia someday? I'd be pretty cool. So what we're going to do today is we're going to make something that kind of looks like a Russian building. So you can see right here on the front, this is St. Basil's Cathedral in Moscow. And it's got these really, really cool tops to their building. I'll show you the real picture of it. Look how cool and colorful those are. I like all the colors on there called like onion towers because they kind of look like onions. And we're going to make one that looks like it. So I made one over here, you can see. It's got a little nice top to it, and it's really, really easy to do. So for this craft, all you need is paper, a hole punch, although you can get by by just poking it with a pencil. Uh, you need pipe cleaners and beads if you want to, but again, you don't need to. And then and some scissors and paper towel tube for your tower. So what we're going to do is you're going to take, I took a couple of colors, I've got blue and white. I'm going to take two colors, or you can make them all one, you can make it however you want. And you're going to cut strips about a half inch to an inch, doesn't really matter as long as they're all about the same. And we're going to make about ten. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't want mine to be quite that long, so I'm going to trim it down just a little bit because otherwise it would make a really, really, really big ball. And I don't mean any ball to be that big. So I'm going to cut off just a couple inches, but you can make them however big you want. Then you're going to go ahead and you're going to take a hole punch, or if you just want to use a pencil, and you're going to make sure you poke a hole at each end. So I'm going to do a few at a time, so that way we can go by a little faster. You want it right about the center, like that. See, and you do it on both sides. So that's what we're going to stick our pipe cleaner through and make it into a ball. All right. And you can use regular printer paper, and you could color on it if you don't have colored paper at home. Whatever works for you. All right, now we need our pipe cleaners. So I'm gonna take a pipe cleaner, I'm gonna put a bead. You don't have to have a bead, you can just make a, like, kind of a roll it up on the ball and make it so it doesn't, the, doesn't go through the hole, so you can do that. Or I kind of like the idea of adding a bead, because why not? So I'm gonna add the bead, and I'm going to wrap it around so that way it doesn't fall off, like so. I'm gonna leave it sticking up a little bit as a little tiny spire on it. Then we're gonna take all of those strips of paper that we used before, and we're gonna put through that end like this. You wanna make sure it doesn't go through. 
playing there. And then one at a time, we're gonna feed through the paper through the other end. Now the reason why we wanna do one at, end, one at a time is so that we can slowly wrap it around to make it into a ball. So I've got one, two, three, four, I'm gonna do a couple at a time. And then you can spread them out. Like that. See how it's starting to look like our onion tower. We're gonna keep on going. I'm gonna do them all at once, but it's easier if you do them one at a time. But I'm gonna try and spread it out so you can see what it's gonna look like. There it is. Let's try and stuck together. All right, so you can see, kind of looks like that. They're all, if you do it one at a time, they won't stick together as much like I did. And they'll look, but there you go, you got the ball, and you'll put them all, all the way around. And then when you're done, you're gonna wanna fold or a little, little knot at the bottom, just so that it stays where it's at, like that. And you got the top of it. And then, you can go ahead and poke it through a toilet paper tube or a paper towel tube and you're going to tape it and then you can tape it on a piece of cardboard and you can make your very own St. Basil's Cathedral with the onion towers and you can decorate the tubes and they'll look super cool and you can make it with all kinds of cool colors just like the real one. And now, after that cool craft, I'm getting hungry. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to make a shalatka, which is a Russian apple cake, which is really, really, really good. So for this cake, it's really easy. All you need is sugar, flour, an egg, and an apple. You wanna try and use a Granny Smith or a really tart apple so it gets more flavorful, but you can use whatever apple you're having around, but these are the best ones. So I happen to have a, a an apple peeler and quarter. But if you don't have one, you can still do this, not a problem. All you have to do is peel and chop up your apple by hand. But I'll show you how mine works. I'm gonna stick my apple on there. And then, now, I'm gonna put it forward. And it peels it and cuts it at the same time. And look at that. Now it's all peeled and I made it kind of like a spring. So we don't want it into a spring cake. We're going to cut it into little pieces. So very carefully, you can have your parents help you. We're going to go ahead and chop it into nice small pieces about that size or even smaller because we're going to be making mini apple cakes. Normally it'd be a regular size of a regular cake pan, but I thought it'd be fun if we made mini ones. You can also make them in a cupcake container. All you would have to do is you would either make less or you can double the recipe and you could make uh, a full dozen. All right, so I got all my stuff to chop. Now it's not traditional, but I think it's really tasty to add a little bit of cinnamon to our apple cakes. Just add a little bit of cinnamon to our apples, mix it up. And then you're gonna take your mini cupcake tin if you have one. If you don't, you can use a regular cupcake tin and you're just gonna bake it for twice as long. And we're going to spray it with cooking oil so it doesn't stick, because we're not gonna use uh, cupcake liners. We're just gonna have them in there, so you wanna spray it really, really good. And you're gonna put uh, your apple slices in there about two thirds full. So you want enough in there so you get some really tasty apples in every bite. Actually, these are so small, you could probably eat the whole thing in one bite. So about two thirds full. Like I said, this recipe is really easy to double if you want to. So you can make bigger or smaller. You can even make it into a whole big cake pan if you want. Nice and easy, put a little bit in each one. I got a little extra apple, but not a problem. I'll just have to eat that myself later. All right, probably chop these a little too big, but that's okay. All right, now we're gonna put that aside and we are going to make the batter. All you have to do is you're gonna start with your egg and you're gonna 
crack it open. And then we're going to beat it for a little bit to make sure it's all nice and smooth. So go ahead, you take a fork and you whisk it around until it's all a light yellow, if you guys can see it. All light yellow. Just whisk it as fast as you can. All right, almost enough. Now, we're gonna do a third of a cup of sugar and a third of a cup of flour. So nice and easy to remember. We're gonna go for a third of a cup of sugar and a third of a cup of flour. And before you start baking, you can preheat your oven to about 350. So, which I've already done earlier, but you do that. And then you mix it together. It's gonna be kind of thick. And mix it till it's all blended together. And then you're just gonna put a little bit in, in each. And then this is traditionally, it's kind of like an upside down cake. So when you pop them off, or when you pop them out of there, you're gonna serve it upside down. All right, so there we go. We've got some tasty batter, almost like cookie batter, kind of feels like it. And then we're gonna spoon a little bit into each of our apple things. Just give it a little bit of dough in each one. And then you're going to cook it for about eight to 10 minutes if you're making mini cupcakes or mini uh, apple cakes like I am, or you can do it for about 15, 16, or maybe up to 20, you kind of have to keep an eye on it if you're doing regular cupcakes. And then I'm gonna finish doing this, I'm gonna pause my video, and I will show you what it looks like after it bakes for eight to 10 minutes. See you in a little bit. We're back at it with our apple cakes, our shalotka. Now, all you have to do, once you take them out of the oven and let them cool, you just have to flip them upside down onto a plate. And oh, some of them flipped, some of them didn't. But you can see, they've got the apples baked right in. And they are good. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.